We're going to look at a couple different habitats on campus, exploring the abiotic and biotic factors, but we're only going to explain a couple habitats in detail because there are so many. The fish tank by the commons. Some biotic factors are the fish that eat the food and the snails that keep water quality up. Some abiotic factors are the filter that cleans the water and the glass that reflects the sunlight. In the courtyard by our classroom, some of the biotic factors include trees and squirrels because the squirrels are going to be attracted to this area because of the trees that they can rest in. But there's not going to be a lot of deer or other factors like that because they would have to go through the breezeway just to get into the courtyard and they are more likely to be found in open grass areas. For abiotic factors, the buildings are going to create a lot of shade which will help the oak trees cast a shade. The garden. Some biotic factors are the humans that pick the ripe fruits and vegetables and the groundhog that eats the plants. An abiotic factor is fence because it keeps the vegetation in the garden contained while also keeping other pests out. In the courtyard by the commons, the biotic factors are going to be mostly flying insects like bees, gnats, even mosquitoes because there aren't other animals in the courtyard to bring non-flying insects in there. There are also bushes in there that have been planted. For abiotic factors, there are rocks and benches, even shade from the buildings. So a lot of the factors in this courtyard are brought in by humans. The pond. Some biotic factors are the turtles that compete for living space and food and the fish that eat the insects. An abiotic factor is the rainfall because it causes the pond to overflow its banks.